Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's neighborhood meeting. My name is Celeste Kitsemetry, and I'm the senior planner with the City of Barrie's uh, Development Services Department. The focus of tonight's meeting will be on the currently proposed application for a zoning bylaw amendment and site plan, um, and ultimately what would be a site plan application for 181 Burton Avenue. Please be aware we are recording this meeting for the public record. All information provided is being collected and will be used for the purpose of garnering your input to address, uh, to respond to inquiries and to be notified of future meetings and they will be uh, considered for future public information. Should you have any questions regarding this collection, please contact the Development Services Department. I would like everyone to know that there are staff behind the scenes managing the technology tonight. They have the ability to interrupt the meeting at any time and will endeavor to allow the applicant and each member of the public the opportunity to speak. Please bear with us if we have any technical issues. I'm just going to look at the participants and it appears that we have 11 attendees from the public, um, as well as um, four panelists in attendance tonight. And I'd like to also welcome um, Ward Councillor uh, Jim Harris to the meeting. He is, um, he is here to uh, listen and um, see the presentation as well as uh, yourselves in the neighborhood. I can confirm that tonight's meeting is not a statutory requirement of the Planning Act. As the application is in its early stages of the review process, the intent of tonight's meeting is more to provide members of the public with an opportunity to become familiar with the development application and the planning review process, and also ask the applicant questions and provide feedback on what they have proposed. Uh, tonight's neighborhood meeting will include a presentation from the applicant um, or their representative, describing the proposal, a brief overview of the city's review process and timing, an opportunity to ask questions of either the applicant or city staff, and provide comments or identify concerns with the application. City staff recommendations on the application or the detail. <clears throat> Apologies, everybody. Please, um, what not to expect tonight is city staff recommendations on the applicant on the application or a detailed analysis, analysis on the proposal. This will occur once the application is submitted and during the review process. A debate on the merits of the application between city staff and the applicant will also not occur. Once we move on to the Q&A period, I wish to ask, a, if you wish to ask a question or provide comment, you will be required to use the meeting controls to raise your virtual hand you can find the raise your hand button and other meeting controls at the bottom of your screen. For those who are joining us by traditional phone dial-in, you can press nine to raise your virtual hand. And when you're called on to speak, you press six to unmute yourself. You will be called by name to speak uh, by myself and um, you will then need to unmute yourself and then um, please clearly state your name and address and provide your comment or question. As we work through the questions and comments later in the meeting, I respectfully request that members of the public please avoid repeating the same questions and comments over again. Once a specific matter has been identified, it will be documented and the applicant will either provide a response verbally this evening or provide a response later in the process during the public meeting or in written format through any subsequent submissions. This approach will allow us to have a more productive meeting and conclude the meeting as scheduled. Those who have registered for this meeting by providing a mail or email address will be added to the mailing list to receive further information about the application. Before we get into the presentations, I just want to quickly highlight the next steps in the application process. We are currently in the initial stages of the process. The application the applicant has completed pre-consultation technical review with a variety of internal city staff and external agencies with the expectation that
that an application is forthcoming. After tonight's meeting, the applicant will need to incorporate comments received from this neighborhood meeting and make a presentation through the public meeting process before the planning committee. The formal submission will be reviewed with comments received from the city's technical departments and external agencies, as well as considered, um, as well as consideration of the public input. This neighborhood meeting is established clear early in the, in the development process to ensure local concerns are incorporated or addressed through the city's review. Following tonight's meeting and review of the formal applications, there will be a public meeting with councils, council scheduled in the future. The public meeting is a statutory requirement under the Planning Act. Everyone who registered for tonight's meeting, as well as all property owners within 120 meters of the subject lands will be notified of the public meeting. The public meeting will also be held virtually, similar to tonight's meeting, dependent on COVID protocols. At the public meeting, the applicants will present the applications to council and again, answer questions. At the public meeting, applicants generally identify that the neighborhood meeting has been held and provide an overview of and a response to the issues and concerns identified in the meeting. Members of the public will again have an opportunity to provide either verbal or written comments at the public meeting. Following the public meeting, staff will continue the technical review process associated with the applications and the applicants may make any necessary revisions to the development proposal. Once the review process has concluded, a staff recommendation report will be brought forward to council oh, for their consideration. All comments, <laughs> I recognize Ian's voice there for a second. <laughs> Mute yourself, please. <laughs> All comments received throughout the review process, uh, including those received at the neighborhood and public meetings will be identified and addressed in the staff report and will form part of the staff's recommendation on the subject application. I will now move on to the applicant's presentation. And as I mentioned, the applicant the application will be presented first, followed by a question and comment period. Um, we have Celeste Phillips from, um, on behalf of the applicant, going to prepare a presentation or going to uh, present the application tonight. The proposal is for a three-story 22 unit residential apartment building at the captioned, at the subject location, which is 182 Burton Avenue. It is for a change in the zoning um, from general commercial to mixed use corridor to facilitate that use. And I will now hand it over to uh, Celeste Phillips to present the application proposal. So my name is Celeste Phillips. I'm a land use planning consultant and I'm here this evening to introduce the development proposal for 181 Burton Avenue. And as you probably know, Ian Malcolm, the project engineer is also attending this evening in case there's any um, particular questions that I'm not able to help you with. So this property is owned by 8952175 Canada Corp. It operates as Uplands Holding, also as a Monolite as the names of the uh, property ownership. And this property um, is, um, currently zoned commercial and the request is for consideration to permit a three-story building with 22 residential units, um, one and two bedroom units. And so the zoning that's being requested is uh, a mixed use uh, two zoning, which I think you've probably already gone over. Um, the property, I refer to it as the north side of Burton Avenue. I've seen it referenced as the east side, but I call it the north side of Burton Avenue. Uh, it's west of Huronia Road and east of Bayview. It's within the city of Barrie's Urban Growth Centre. And the property um, is partially tree uh, and it's vacant and it consists of about a half acre in size and the dimensions are 49.5 metres by 40.3 metres. It's outlined in yellow on this slide. Um, the existing official plan designation is general commercial um, and it's zoned general commercial as well, C4. And so that request, as I mentioned, is the MU2 zone. Um, the surrounding land uses to the north is uh, the green area is open space. 
The pink area on either side and to the south of the property represents a general commercial designation. And beyond the pink to the south is uh, residential development. So these are the elevations that Ian Malcolm, the architect, has prepared, showing the three-story structure with 22 units. So these are the views of the building from the north, south, east, and west. And then this is from a view of the building from uh, Burton Avenue. You will see on the right-hand side of the photo is the uh, uh, underground, not underground, sorry, at surface entrance to the property that goes underneath um, proposed units. So the 22 units are proposed in this three-story building. There would be 12 one-bedroom units and 10 two-bedroom units. Uh, garbage disposal would be a subsurface so that the way that's done now is uh, often with uh, various systems that are out there called the Moloch system sort of a move away from um, garbage bins um, and more of a, a, a different approach to garbage disposal. Now this is the bird's eye view of the property. This is the site plan. So again, this is Burton Avenue along the bottom of the slide. And this is the drive through underpass uh, to get into the rear yard where the parking area is located as well as an amenity area in this location. And this uh, is the final slide, and it's really a list of all of the things that will be submitted to support the rezoning application. Um, a lot of these, a lot of this work has been done in uh, draft, and um, we would submit at some point following um, this evening's meeting. So, as part of the complete application, there's a requirement for a planning justification report, and that's a report that I prepare that provides the planning rationale as to why um, these, the rezoning of these lands to a different category is supported by both provincial and municipal planning policies. So in that report, I review the provincial policy statement, the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and the City Barry Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw. In addition to that, there's the property survey um, and uh, supplementary reports or technical reports include um, an environmental impact study that has been done. Um, the results of that is that there are no species at risk or no significant woodlots on this property. And there's a recommendation that um, when development is to take place, that uh, silt fencing be installed to protect the surrounding area and that tree removal is, um, is to be undertaken outside um, the uh, breeding bird uh, season, which is uh, determined by the Migratory Bird Act. And typically that is no tree cutting between April 15 and August 15. Uh, also uh, will be submitted is a noise report. Um, that noise report has a look at and studies the um, two noise sources in the area. To the north are the rail lands and to the south is an automotive use. And there are recommendations coming out of that noise report with respect to triple glazing of windows and uh, balcony, balcony configurations for uh, a couple of units on the north and east sides of the building. And then um, there has been soils reports, uh, soils work done and a soils report will be submitted. And in addition to that, an engineering report that addresses um, the fact that there are municipal services uh, along Burton Avenue um, it also addresses a stormwater management because um, in development uh, in the province, the flows from the property, stormwater flows from the property today have to be matched in the post-development scenario. So there's a look at how uh, stormwater will be contained on the property. And it also deals uh, in accordance with um, policies of the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority. It deals with policies related to water balance and phosphorus um, mitigation. So that completes um, my presentation. And as I mentioned, we're here to hear from the public on what their thoughts are and any questions that we may be able to assist you with. So thank you.